you know, we're trying to improve the, the safety of boiling water reactors and uh, take better advantage of the safety systems that they have in place already. As there was one system at, a, at the Fukushima plants that operated very well. And we'd like to take credit for that system in our boiling water reactors. We have the same system in a lot of our boiling water reactors. One of our findings was, uh, for example, we're looking at a, a large, it's called a suppression chamber, where the, some of the turbo machinery, the turbine exhausts heat into this large pool of water in the suppression chamber, and a pump takes water out of it and returns it back to the reactor pressure vessel to keep the, the fuel cooled. And one of the things that we were investigating was you're, you're adding energy to the system, yet you're taking water out. So what are the limits on how long that system can operate before the water gets too hot for the pump to return it back to the reactor pressure vessel? Uh, this big tank I'm standing in front of is known as the suppression chamber. So that's uh, an analog to a reactor system that's used in, in many plants around the world. And our experiments here have, in the, um, in the past, few years have involved injecting steam into a suppression chamber. So it's about filled halfway up with water and we inject steam into it. And since it's able to hold pressure, we're able to see how the temperature distribution is, um, is arranged as we insert steam through different flow regimes. And uh, we found that it tends to stratify pretty well. Turbines are supposed to take in, uh, operate well with gas only. They're not supposed to operate well when they ingest water. Um, and we're fairly certain that at the Fukushima reactors, they were ingesting water. The water level was high, became high, spilled out of the reactor pressure vessel into the turbine. And yet the turbine performed fine, even though it was taking in water and steam. And so we'll be doing some testing here where we inject water and steam into the turbine and get a better handle on how it performs with this two-phase steam-water mixture going into it. I've been learning a lot about how the um, water recirculates in the system and, and when we're approaching thermal temperature limits that won't let the system operate any longer. Okay, so what we do is we initially inject water from the top of the uh, test section. That actually forms an annular film around the actual test section. Once the annular film is established, we then actually inject air from right here into the bottom of the test section. And once that air actually reaches a critical velocity, um, reversal ends up occurring in the actual water. So one thing that's happened is that one way to cool off a reactor during um, shutdown is actually injecting water into uh, one of the steam exit channels. And that's what we're looking at. Some of the issues that arise is if that steam is going too fast, it actually stops water from getting into the reactor core.